Today we're going to study a different place in which the harmonic division often occurs, and that's when we have an internal and an external angle bisector, as on the picture. You can see we have a triangle, and this here is the internal angle bisector of this angle, and this here is the external angle bisector of the same angle, and they intersect this side at this point and this point. Then I claim that these four points are actually in harmonic division. Let's label this side of the triangle as A, this side as B, and let's label this segment X, this Y, and this here Z. From the angle bisector theorem, we have that Y divided by X equals A divided by B, as shown here. And from the theorem about the external angle bisector, we have that x plus y plus z divided by z equals b divided by a, as given here. And now we can take these two equalities and multiply them to cancel out the a and the b. When we do that, we get that x plus y plus z divided by z times y divided by x equals 1, which is x plus y plus z over z times y over x equals 1. Therefore, these four points are in harmonic division. We can also prove this statement in the reverse direction. Suppose we have four points that are in harmonic division, i.e. x plus y plus z over z times y over x equals 1. Then, suppose I take this point, such that this angle here is 90 degrees. Then, I can show that this line is actually the angle bisector of this angle, and that this line is actually the angle bisector of this angle, respectively. I'm going to label this angle by alpha and this angle by beta. We're going to show that alpha equals beta. Since this angle is beta and this is 90, then this angle must be 90 minus beta. And since this angle is alpha and this angle is 90, then this angle must be 90 minus alpha. But now remember one of the properties of the cross ratio is that the cross ratio x plus y plus z divided by z times y divided by x is the same as the ratio of the corresponding sines with respect to any point in the plane. So that sine of this angle, which is sine of 90 plus alpha, divided by sine of 90 minus beta, times sine of beta divided by sine of alpha. And so we have that 1 equals that cross ratio, so it equals sine of 90 plus alpha divided by sine of 90 minus beta, times sine of beta divided by sine of alpha. And now we know that sine of 90 plus alpha equals sine of 90 minus alpha, because the sum of 90 plus alpha and 90 minus alpha is 180 degrees. We also know that sine of 90 minus beta equals cosine of beta, because the sum of beta and 90 minus beta is 90 degrees. Similarly, sine of 90 minus alpha equals cosine of alpha. And we also know that cosine of beta divided by sine of beta is cotangent beta, so we can write sine of beta over cosine of beta as 1 over cotangent of beta. And similarly, cosine alpha divided by sine alpha equals cotangent of alpha. And so we get that this expression here turns into cotangent of alpha divided by cotangent of beta. So, cotangent of alpha equals cotangent of beta, because this expression ultimately equals 1. And now we have two angles that have equal cotangents, but the two angles are between 0 and 180 degrees, and therefore the angles themselves are equal. This means that this red line is the angle bisector of this angle, and this red line is the external angle bisector of this same angle. And now this leads us to the definition of the Apollonian circle. The Apollonian circle is the circle with diameter this segment here from this point to this point, and it has the property that Whatever point we choose on the Apollonian circle, for example here, the ratio of this length divided by this length is going to be exactly equal to the ratio B divided by A. And this is now really easy to prove, because you see, for any point on the Apollonian circle, this angle is 90 degrees, and these four points marked in green are still in harmonic division. Therefore, this line here must be an angle bisector of this angle. From the angle bisector theorem, we know that this divided by this equals x divided by y, which we know from the same theorem equals b divided by a. And it doesn't matter if we choose the point here, or here, or here, or here, it would always be true that the ratio that we get, the distance from this point to the point on the circle, divided by the distance between the point on the circle and this point, this ratio would always be equal to b divided by a. So the locus of all points, such that this ratio, this divided by this, is constant, this is exactly the Apollonian circle. Here's the optional problem. We have a triangle here, and this here is the midpoint of this side, and we drop a perpendicular at this point to this line, which intersects this line at this point. And then we connect this point and this point with a line, and then this line intersects the parallel line to this one through this point at this point here. So this is parallel to this. We need to prove that the length of this blue segment equals the length of this blue segment here. And here's the solution. Let's take the cross ratio of the four points marked in purple. 
and let's project this cross ratio onto this line with respect to this point. Then this point goes here, this point stays fixed, this point goes here, and this point goes to the intersection of this line and this line, which is in the point of infinity. So the cross ratio of this point, this point, this point, and the point of infinity is the same as the cross ratio of this point, this point, this point, and this point. But since this point is the midpoint of this segment, we have that these three points and the point of infinity are in harmonic division. You see, this infinite distance divided by this infinite distance, we can assume this to be 1, times this divided by this, which is 1, equals 1. And therefore, these four points, which have the same cross ratio, must also be in harmonic division. But now note that we have four points in harmonic division and a point here such that this angle is 90 degrees, which means that this must be the angle bisector of this angle, and respectively this must be the external angle bisector of the same angle. Now that we have that this angle equals this angle, we can use the fact that this line is parallel to this line and get that this angle here equals this angle, from which is clear that this triangle is isosceles and therefore this side equals this side.